perfect. Uh, welcome to, yeah, for us it's four in the afternoon. So good day, good morning, uh, good evening, wherever you are on this lovely planet. Um, <laughs> my name is uh, Thomas Gölles and I'm with here with my yeah, colleague, MVP colleague, friend, uh, Hans, uh, and we will talk the next 60 minutes about uh, our common project, the community bot for OneDrive, in terms of where's the idea from, what roadblocks did we hit by creating a Teams application, and where are we now? And uh, yeah, I think a 20, 25 minute demo block, depending on how much time we spent talking. The interesting thing is that uh, we have to go into the past. It's a community. That means it's not a commercial product. You are able to do and do it and install it after the session or during the session, whatever you want. But you shall listen. It's not only what the bot is and about about OneDrive and the, the, the stable. The, the, the thing is, uh, you have to look also for the development and what hints are there. And that was a long, long story. And therefore, we should begin going into the past. But first, we have to say, OK, um, I have it in my session. Although there are three developers, no, two developers. And uh, I'm giving all of my knowledge that Stefan Bissa is not today with us. That's our AI MVP and Thomas Gölles as a developer in the office terms. And that means they have it in their hands and put all things together. And uh, that doesn't make sense, not only for commercial products, you have to understand behind the scenes. So that's also interesting for developers. What can you do? if you work together and make it available and it takes off a lot of hours and uh, therefore we want to talk about that and then we will have a little competition me against the bot be, be, before we really start through uh, a short notice to all the great sponsors that make those events possible uh, hans myself we are yeah if, Without the pandemic, we probably wouldn't be able to talk to you through right now because you are in a total different or the, the main event is a totally different area of the world. But I think uh, and knowing a couple of names on, on this slide, I think it's the same everywhere. Without sponsors, those events cannot take place. Uh, thank you. Uh, go to them. Uh, look at their offers. Talk to them. Uh, they really drive all those uh, community events and yeah without them it's simply not possible uh doesn't matter it's a, a sunday or monday you need uh those people to chip in their their shares and make those events possible okay um let's start with a short history of of uh, the bot and where did we start and how did we start um we had now it's more than two years, two years and a month ago, uh, Shepard Conference in, in Austria, in Vienna, uh, where I think actually Stefan uh, gave a talk about uh, state of the art of the bot framework, um, what is possible, um, what can you do with a bot in Teams or in Facebook or in, in a web chat, um, and Hans uh, was part of the audience, uh, and we are like in a, yeah, more like in a, in, in a, in a, group or in, in, in a circle where we are very honest with feedback uh, with our sessions and that's that's always nice to get to get the, the, the tough feedback uh, from a friend and then you know okay if he says something that, that you don't want to hear it's easier than to hear it from someone else um, and in that case it wasn't actually a feedback on on the, on the session itself but more on the state of the bot. Uh, Hans was back then already envisioning or, or in, a, in a visionary state of mind in terms of what the digital assistant uh, should be able to do. And let's be clear, 2019 and I think also today, we are a little bit far away from the the idea uh, or the vision, right? What, what you think, what the bot should be able to do and uh, <laughs> what it actually is able to do. So it's two different things. 
I have I've written this in a blog story. That means a chin story. We have to explain the chin is although we have a lot of chins uh, after the sessions, after the coloring months together where we not were in the pandemic. And therefore you have to look for the chin story on my blog site. You find that. Yeah, uh, and and by a lot of chins, we, we are talking about two or three a evening. It's, we're not we're not or I am not in the in the in the shape anymore to drink more. It's it. This time is over. So <laughs> it's it's more like talking and enjoying uh, exchange of ideas. Um, half a year later, um, we went to Munich for Shepard Center in Munich, uh, and in the in the speaker room, I think uh, we we explicitly waited for uh, everything uh be being done and 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 uh everyone will finish with the session we surprised hans with hey we have something for you uh there is the there's a, a bot now and you can you can try and play with it so we, we took the feedback from from vienna and we took some time uh laid out an, an architecture that was uh state of the art back then that that might not be the same approach you should choose when you start today, but that's, that's always in, in text. Things change so quickly. Um, but nevertheless, we we came up to Hans and say, hey, we have something. Uh, let's get this started. Are you interested in, in working together on, on a bot project? And make no mistake, uh, creating the bot, I don't know. Uh, it feels like sometimes it's like 20-25% uh, of the whole project, even over time, it it get, it's get less because the most important part of, of the bot in our case is the knowledge. So this means we are now uh, way over 620 questions uh, in our knowledge bases uh, in, in German and in English. Details why two languages later. Uh, and Hans basically, uh, okay, he's not the developer, but he's for sure the, the content developer and feeds the knowledge base and trains the bot and updates the bot with questions and, no, and, and knowledge that maybe isn't even on a Microsoft blog yet because it will be uh, on the Microsoft blog in the next week or in two weeks, but information is already in the bot in some cases. So that's that's insane amount of work and that's the, 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 the main part basically of the bot. So uh, from a technical point of view, it's it's uh, if, you, if you're done and happy, it's okay, but the content needs to evolve and needs to be updated and refreshed week in and week out. Um, with that, we quickly came to a start and said, okay, let's start with Mr. OneDrive spot. And why Mr. OneDrive? That can only explain Mr. OneDrive. <laughs> uh, a few years ago, people uh, talked to me. I came and uh, from the restroom from um, during the MVP summit. People who don't know uh, the shop, uh, the MVPs may also have once a year go to Redmond, US, from all over the world. Half of them will do that, half of the 3,800 or whatever the numbers now is. And uh, we missed that because then you can talk, have a one week and talk to the people directly, to different product groups and so on. And they have a new manager in, in OneDrive. Now it's in Teams, but anyway, um, they are, want to say, Hey, hey, this is Hans. I came from the restroom. Uh, I want to show, we call it Mr. OneDrive. And uh, that was the beginning. Microsoft gave me this title. And nowadays, I still have some autograph parts. And uh, that's the thing that, that Mr. OneDrive is a name, a brand. Microsoft gives it to me. That's nothing else. But yes, if they do that, then we can do. Now we can, we have, a, a, our Hans has his own brand and of course, that's that's something you can play with. Um, when when we started um, in, in in March 2020, um, the, the bot is based on a QA maker. QA maker is a service based in Azure. Uh, QA maker.ai. You can go there and create a knowledge base. Uh, basically, uh, you have a column uh, that defines a question, and you have columns that defines answers. So you can think of it. Uh, like an Excel spreadsheet. And there actually is a, a technical implementation where you can use an Excel spreadsheet and say, column A is all our questions, column B in the same row uh, is the answer. Um, and 
that's that's the trick or the that's was our marketing how to lure Hans into uh, this this whole project because we just said to him here here's an Excel uh, <laughs> fill in uh, question answers and the bot will do the rest and he was uh, fired up and uh, started and yeah that's basically when we started realizing like after one or two or three weeks I don't know but it was pretty pretty quickly um, that this won't cut it. Um, basically, uh, Excel is way too um, simply or way too simple in, in terms of how you can uh, format and um, put extra emphasis into into text. And also, what we what we started doing was that we wanted to create a true um, international, a true multi-language. Uh, service and we used uh, Bing Translate for that and we thought okay um, we we all speak German over here that's our, our mother tongue so that's that's the, the easiest way for us uh, we define question answers in German and from there we use Bing Translate and then we have like I don't know what was it 67 68 languages uh, and the service will translate it in all those beautiful languages and everyone basically around the globe uh, can talk to a bot um, we soon realized yeah it's better to do that with an English database uh, because uh, if you start with German, you already start like at, at minus two or minus three uh, in, in terms of levels because Bing has a hard time translating uh, away from German. Let's say, let's, let's phrase it that way. It's way, way, way better uh, if we do the extra work and define our question and answers in English and from English it's it's way better and way better results uh, in terms of, of multi-language um, but we still had a lot of trouble with languages right yes yeah, not only the languages now we have two databases means I have a database in German and I have a database in English so that's twice and it's all about formatting and the stuff you will see it later but the thing is uh, we switched over from Excel to the Q&A maker uh, that's a web-based thing and it was also terrible I have to learn a lot of markdown and I still struggle with this markdown because nowadays in the Q&A maker, they have an editor, but this doesn't work. Means the knowledge is only a thing. Questions you can feel is also a little thing. That's 1%. In two languages, 2%. And 98% is testing, not only in the Q&A maker, but also this is run in teams. So formatting is not the correct way. If it's okay, you have to test it in QA Maker. If it's run there, it doesn't mean it runs in Teams perfectly. So 95% or 90, yeah, let's say 95% of all the knowledge or all the things is testing, testing, testing. Now we have three testing areas. And in the near future where we have a new things of Teams, you will see that with Windows 11, that we have four areas of cloud stuff. And the mobile area is over there. That means the testing stuff is it's the most most times consuming stuff in all the during the complete project. You think that everything is just HTML, but uh, just if you look at how those different um, areas, like Hans called it, so the Teams desktop client, the Teams iOS client, the Teams Android client, and in the near future, um, the new Teams version, uh, which is part already in, in the, for the private uh, accounts in, in Windows 11. Um, yeah, it's all HTML, but it's interpreted a little bit different. And with pictures, you see it. And uh, we had a lot of trouble also with uh, markdown in the sense of you have asterisks and, and extra symbols to define formatting and being translate, yeah, screwed uh, those those extra uh, symbols up and and introduced spaces where there aren't spaces in, in the markdown formatting so uh, it worked fine we tested it in, in Dutch it worked fine we tested it in Swedish it worked fine we tested it in Portuguese it worked fine we tested it in Danish didn't work tested in Polish didn't work tested in Czech didn't work but it's all <laughs> the same input so it's 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 tough and the, the challenge really is it's not that we only have a plain sentence 
we always use formatting. So, for example, if we take the history of Mr. Wombat's uh, wonder spot in under the header here, uh, if uh, we want to make an emphasis in history, so we make two asterisks in the front and in, in the back to make that bold. Um, yeah, those two asterisks will get mixed up during the translation and then Teams has uh, trouble interpreting the translated markdown. So we went back and made the, the easy way for our uh, first release version. We now have two languages, English and German, and you need to tell the bot uh, what's your preferred language and you can switch it during the conversation, of course, but um, that's the, the status quo. Uh, and going forward, we're thinking of, of, of course, uh, extending that to, to more languages, but how this works more in, in detail later. Um, first release, better version. Uh, I think we asked around 100 or, or close hmm. to 100 yeah. Uh, um, yeah, friends or, or people that we know. Uh, please uh, test the service. Um, please test the quality of the, of the translation in, in special. Uh, test the, the, um, the type of questions because uh, Hans made an uh, a good observation, um, meaning that the, as the bot is uh, deployed to Teams, uh, our target audience is not only the IT people. So um, the bot uh, is also intended to be of assistance or to help uh, what we call the everyday user, not only uh, IT people. So of course there is, I think, three or four or five uh, detailed articles about group policies and how to use them and how to set them up. But there is also a lot of uh, stuff like, for example, sharing files, something that really uh, an everyday user needs to know that just wants to get uh, his or her work done with OneDrive. So that's a little bit of a different uh, audience. So Hans did a lot of research, um, looked at search engines, uh, asked around what, what are people uh, asking IT people in terms of OneDrive because all the, the admin stuff and the, the IT decision maker stuff, that's that's experience we have. We know what, what those people are after, governance, deployment, uh, permissions, all those things. Um, but like everyday users, um, that's also a, an interesting and a, a, we think, um, and as, as Teams is now used by more than 250 million uh, people every month at least once, depending on, on Microsoft is, is measuring and those those numbers, but but there are no way that's all uh, IT people. So uh, end users is the, the main focus area. Um, we took the summer and, and yeah, also a, a little bit of the uh, last part of the year uh, to finalize our, our beta version and then, uh, yeah, the, the joy ride of releasing stuff in Teams started um, because we started in, in November submitting the first release to Microsoft. This means that you um, need a, a company account or a, a Microsoft Office developer account and go to uh, your partner page and submit a package to the store. And that package uh, includes uh, your Teams application. So your manifest file, your logos, and, and all uh, those artifacts, and detailed information about you as a vendor or you as, as a company. That's that's the first thing that uh, if you do something as a community project, uh, you, you don't tick all of those boxes. So you're not a company, you, you don't pay taxes, you don't have the same information available that of course companies have, like, like vendors, uh, independent solution vendors, ISVs, uh, that, that's the, the main uh, audience for, for the Microsoft people. So we had, had trouble uh, submitting all the right information. We, we choose to go the route through our company uh, so that, that's easier. So we are not uh, some, some total outlaws, but we really <laughs> had some, some, some troubles. And yeah, it all started because we thought it would be a good idea to just call the bot Mr. Rondra's bot and uh, three or, or four weeks after submitting, we got the first feedback and there was a big red flag. Uh, you're not allowed to use uh, Microsoft brand names or product names in the name of your Teams application. So someone was saying that's Mr. OneDrive. OneDrive is a word that we have uh, 
claimed uh, to be a product name uh, from Microsoft, you're not allowed to do that. Um, yeah, that's a little bit of a, or that was a little bit of a of a problem or or what would be the alternative? Um, and we had a, I don't know, we had this this typical, uh, you are outside of a, a 100,000 plus uh, employee corporation, um, three people uh, emailing with, with different persons inside uh, the big blue Microsoft. Uh, and this email ping pong took like, I don't know, four or five weeks back and forth. Mm -hmm. And what should we do? Uh, and yeah, finally, uh, after, and, and I don't want to get into details, but uh, in the end of the day, uh, there was a, a corporate vice president included. Uh, and uh, from Omar, actually, the name was then moved to Community Bot for OneDrive, and everyone or everyone had to be fine with with that solution. Yeah, but the name is although OneDrive is in there, therefore. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, we say it's a good idea because it was a community project. It's still a community project, and therefore it's okay with the name. And uh, therefore we we have to change several logos. We have to change several things. Uh, a lot of discussion, and each person who will be building a bot has to be. Uh, Think about the process. It takes a lot of time. You got no answer. They got two different teams, one in US, one in, 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 in India and so on to talk about the same thing. And we have to say yes or no. What, what is now the right one? The new name was there and then it takes only a little bit time. And when was this released? That's the next step, I think. Yeah, yeah, fighting with Microsoft. Okay, we talk about that. And after that, uh, in, in April, we have the first release of the first version. Yep, and that's 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 so interesting because you only need because if you, if you think of a of a bot and we will see that that later on um, if you if you through uh, jump through all the loops once you can change the bot without them knowing what you're doing so uh, yeah it's it's that's clear they want to make sure that that no not the it, it's Saturday we can be we can be frank and uh, they they don't want their store to end up like the Android store we have no idea. Uh, who is the vendor of your application and and what what actually is going to happen there so they want like a, a monitored system there are now more than a thousand applications in the team store but they are all uh reviewed and tested so that the everyday user has a good experience installing and and, and playing with with those tools that's a good thing and of course that's also a bad thing because you need to jump through those review hoops and they are not always only from a pure technical or logical point of view, there are also a lot of marketing and, and politics included. And that's something you need to think, uh, bef think of before you really start submitting because otherwise it's this email ping pong uh, and you have no idea in the process where you actually are. But they promised to, to make that better and clearer. Um, and it's, it's this typical thing, you get uh, a link to documentation uh, saying exactly how many pixels a picture should have and what colors you should use. You you do exactly what the documentation says and then you get an email back saying, nope, that's wrong. There's something new, <laughs> you need to do it differently. Okay, let's do it again. So that, that's more like, it's more like annoying. It's not really, it's not really a uh, problem solving. It's more like annoyance and, and yeah, fulfilling processes that seem to be very fluid and not fixed yet. But that's basically the, the time frame, And of course, um, that's that's the time frame of a uh, uh, free time community project. So um, a lot of the things happened late at night on, on weekends and not in our working hours uh, could be. Uh, yeah, from my from my gut feeling, we, we, we if we if we really pulled everything together, we could have done it in, in half a year. And for a for a, a working project from from our company part, I would think that that such a project would be three months. But of course, then you have absolute different resources and, and more people and uh, a different approaches. But that's what it took for us in terms of, of getting that uh, bot out uh, from a community perspective. Um, before you, want you to start with the technical yeah. start, uh, you can go to the next slide. But the, yep. the thing is, uh, nowadays you have to listen. First days in my time, I have to develop something, and then I got a diskette 
Nobody knows that that's a symbol length. Yeah, I have the first one with the 8086, then the small one with, with 8286 processors of Intel. And um, then you came to CDs, DVDs, network share to install something and you have to go around. If you have all, all these technical stuff, what we have talked about, now it's easy to make an update. If you make an update, each person around the planet have this update immediately. And if hey, I have the thing, have a new question because Microsoft is doing a lot of stuff and have a new idea, promote that, I have to do it also. That means I do not need any people there. I only have to manage the database, give you the right, push it, and all the people around the planet has it. That is a fantastic thing to give an audience whatever you want to program in a bot or a different thing that you do not have to do it in a different way. And therefore, it's an easy part now. Yep. Um, a little bit in a, in a technical overview before. Yeah, that's perfect. Yep. So we end up with half an hour of, of demo. Um, that the Teams platform, just an, just an overview, um, you can uh create multiple experiences with teams of course um you all heard of of commands actions probably tabs model pop-ups uh, and we of course uh focus our experience on on the bot framework so as it is a bot it's it's quite obvious um all those experience basically are powered by the microsoft graph if you want to uh, surface data that um, lives or is stored inside microsoft 365 um, in our case, for example, it, that, that's not relevant because we are talking only to the QA maker, but in the business environment, you typically want to reach out to, I don't know, calendar information, to do tasks, planner tasks, all, all those kind of things. Um, and then you need the Microsoft Graph. Uh, Bot Framework SDK, of course, that's the, the middleware uh, we are using um, as, and, and, the, and the tooling and library that we're using to develop our bot and reach across devices. Um, Every Teams application uh, should be aware that it will be surfaced on the desktop and also in the web and on the various mobile platforms, Android and iOS. So you need to be, and we will see uh, what this means. You need to be careful of how you design your, your bot and to make that easy also to just click with fingers on it and not to need to type everything out. Um, the Teams platform um, is also uh, yeah, focusing on, on enterprise developers uh, to make that, that what Hans just said, very easy to roll out applications, to update uh, applications um, and uh, upload them to your own app catalog. And for IT admins, it's very easy to create policies so that you can pin applications to different users in the left rail in the app bar in, in Teams. So let's say next Monday, your marketing department should start with application ABC and your sales department should start with, I don't know, X, Y, Z. Um, that's all powered by the Teams platform in terms of governance, meaning uh, to create processes and to create um, scripts and policies to really uh, surface the applications you want at your end user screens. Um, and then of course, also interesting for ISVs, independent solution vendors, that's the, the software companies out there. And if you look at the uh, team store, uh, Adobe, Atlassian, uh, Masterplan, MindMeister, all those uh, big names uh, that, that typically are around in our ecosystem, are also present already in, in the Teams uh, store. And um, if you want to experience what's possible in, in two ways, meaning uh, what what services and what offers uh, our companies building for Teams. It's a great way to look at those different apps and also from a developer perspective, it's also interesting to see what you can do. So take one of the, the big names and for sure you will see an application that makes use of probably everything that's possible in Teams. That's like a little bit of, yeah, it's not really reverse engineering, it's more like uh, reverse engineering the ideas and possibilities and that's that's a good way to start and to get going in terms of uh, understanding the true value of, of the team's platform um, and then that's something we are still working on uh, you could also get a certification uh, as publisher um, basically you are uh, telling microsoft that you are storing the, the end user data in a, in a way that is compliant to 
GDPR, HIPAA, SOX2, all those different, um, yeah, data security, data sovereignty, data governance uh, rules. Um, and if you tick all the right boxes and if you go through a, a review process, you will get, I think it's a, it's not a, it's not a, a, a blue a checkbox like on Twitter. I think it's a white star or something like that, but you will get some kind of visualize a visual hint in the store that um, this application basically uh, stores the information in, 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 a, in a proper way. And nowadays there's also a even higher certifications like a, a second level where you really need to show the code to Microsoft and really um, open up and then you get the, the highest certification to really be okay architecture and everything is 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 sounded nice and last time we checked it it's only like 10 applications out of over a thousand already having this level two certification um two, there were two questions but one yeah. we have answered this was a spanish database you okay. have answered that we will do that and the second one how to upload the bot to the team's app store um yep um this is a uh, two-part answer. Um, first of all, you need to to create a bot. It's clear you have your manifest file, and then you need to have a, a Microsoft partner account, and then you have a partner center that can be uh, your company, but you can also create a partner or developer account on your own. It's the same thing like you need an Apple a developer account if you really want to uh, Put something into into their store, um, and as soon as you have this this special type of account, uh, you then can go to I think it's really partnermicrosoft.com, and then you have Office Store, and from there is a, a wizard. Uh, it's the same place where you used to upload uh, a SharePoint solution for the marketplace, for example. So it's in in the partner environment. Uh, you need to upload your manifest because your manifest basically. Uh, tells the system where your Azure resources are. Are they interested in, in only those files? And then you need to fill out some vendor information and start the process from there. Um, it won't be available uh, as such to the public uh, in the beginning. You need really to, to go through the process and to need uh, someone at Microsoft needs to push the right button uh, to make that available. Uh, when you get the email that you are through, it takes normally one or two business days to really uh, show up uh, as an application in Teams. Um, but that's only needed if you want to uh, be part of the global uh, team store. Of, if there's no problem just using a bot in your own tenant, in your own environment, then you just need to go to uh, App Studio or to nowadays to the developer portal of Teams. There you can deploy a solution only for your tenant. That's way, way easier. Of course, because there's no no process and no formal review behind that. Um, and back to the slide. Um, from a very high level point of view, uh, if you if you look at, at what is a bot, in the end of the day, it's it's a web application um, communicating through REST endpoints over HTTP uh, using some platform services and of course the our, our bot builder SDK. Um, and you can code against it, uh, or it, it not, not in detail. It's not it's not technically 100% accurate, but it helps to think of a bot, nothing else, like a web server with some web services. Um, a bot per se isn't intelligent. Uh, you need to use uh, various AI services um, from Azure or from somewhere else to really infuse the the EA part in a bot. Other than that, a bot basically acts like a command line tool. You say something to it, it answers. So it's like input text, parsing it, doing something, answering text. Um, and on the bot side, what you are doing with the input text, it's like in our case, uh, we are taking um, the question uh, from Teams. We are on the, on, the, on the bot framework side. We route it through the bot framework, so we really get uh, the just the the question basically from our end users, and then our bot logic starts. Uh, meaning, okay, I need to parse through uh, the input. Um, and in our case, there is, is only a, a two-way difference, uh, meaning do we think that the, the handed over text is a question 
or do we recognize a pattern uh, like one of our commands with two commands in the bot? One is help and the other is uh, change the bot language. Um, if we get those tokens, then we do something special. Uh, otherwise, we are just using the QA maker service, meaning we're taking the question and we're calling the QA maker service again like a web service. Uh, and basically, in, in developer terms, we are throwing the question towards the QA maker service and get back an answer. And we don't only get back an answer, we also get back some, some information about the answer, meaning we get a threshold back, uh, like with a probability or an accuracy where the system tells us, okay, I'm 90% sure that this is the correct answer, or I'm only 20% sure that I have the right answer at hand. So also uh, those things um, we, we get uh, back and we can use those um, metadata, so to speak, uh, to then decide, okay, do we think uh, we hit a certain threshold? Then we can go basically the, the route back uh, and in the end um, answer to our end user. Um, what we are, okay, I didn't click through my explanation, sorry for that. Uh, let's go to the next one. Um, what we are already implemented, but we basically uh, reverted back to the to simpler uh, solutions was that we um, took all the questions and moved them or, or, or throw them against Bing Translate. So, for example, uh, if you probably uh, ask about something in Spanish, um, point one, two, three, everything will be in Spanish. Uh, we realize it's a question. We use Bing Translate. So, we take your Spanish question, uh, throw it against Bing Translate. Um, Bing Translate takes the question, translates it back to English. We take now the English question, throw it against the QA Maker service, hopefully get back an English result. We remember, okay, uh, he or she talked Spanish to me. So taking the question, again, hitting Bing Translate with, hey, that's now an answer, getting back the translated version of the answer, and then the flow uh, starts through. That really works nice in, in a way of it's it's being translation uh, level or 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 um, yeah mm. like the, the it, being translated is as good as it is uh, it, that's, that's the case we all know that how how good uh, automatic translation works but you really get the same results um, we uh, basically uh, remove this option because of the troubles we are having with not just using plain text against Bing, but using markdown format text. And there is a lot of troubles with the format text uh, in the in the translation service. And we are, I think we are, or at least we we, we were told that we uh, opened like a feature request for for this service. But yeah, we, we didn't. I think back we, we can do yet. it in the future, <laughs> but only for different level. So Spanish was a good idea. Uh, Dutch was also a good idea. And we cut out if we come in Czech or in Polish and have to say yeah. it's impossible for us and say, no, you have to do it in English. Yeah. Maybe that's a future thing. Then that's we can. We yeah, can that's do. just that's it's it's really you can you can go to, to Bing Translate right now and, and just use two asterisks in front of a word and in the end and try your language. And it's interesting that it's so different in 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 very, very various uh, language and you, you, you need to understand or, or we need to, to understand that uh, I'm only capable to, to read or to make sense or to, uh, to have an idea what's, what's about in, in, in languages I understand. So I had Latin in school, so I can read a little bit of Spanish. I, cannot, I can order a beer, but, but I don't, don't really can speak Spanish. Uh, I can read Italian, I can read French, of course, English, uh, and all those languages that use our alphabet, but there are way more languages out there. So um, it's really tough for us to say or to, to what, what with the problems we encounter, it's, it's tough for us to really say, hey, that works in every language in the world without the problem, because there are so many languages, we have no clue uh, how it's translated and how the quality is. So that's a, a tough spot actually to really uh, make that, but Maybe, maybe Spanish can be an option because uh, we for sure have a lot of Spanish speaking friends that can take an hour and, and check if the quality is good enough or if we should go back to, to English. Um, Let's go to the competition. 
No. Let's let's start <laughs> over. Uh, what we want to do now is that um, we I will stop the PowerPoint presentation in a, in a couple of seconds. Uh, but basically, uh, we want to test the Bob versus Hans, um, and the test is something like this: um, there is now password protection, and I will I, I will now give the word to Hans and he will start talking about password protection. In the meantime, I will close the presentation view, go over to my web page <laughs> because I can't use the, the, the Teams client and talk to the bot and Hans will explain password protection in OneDrive. In the meantime, you will see me demoing the bot and after Hans finished, we talk about the bot again. So. Please. I think this the first one uh, will rerun. Password protection will go with Office. If you have a Word file and save it in the cloud, then you have all this stuff. That means you can say, I share the thing, and therefore I can say, okay, I'm not quite sure that it's protected because if you take it outside of your organization, you do that outside, but uh, you have to know, hmm, it's an anonymous link. And therefore, I can say, OK, I take a password. That's multifunct MFA for dummies, I say. Means you give a password, take the other people to during a telephone line or whatever you have and say, that's my password to open the file. That's password protection with OneDrive. Yep. OK, it's a short version and you have it so, a little bit quicker. <laughs> I have it quicker because I, I of course, and we need to, to demo also um, the the right use case. Um, this basically is the bot now in 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 a in a web version because we I'm using my Teams client right now my my my, my proper Teams client. I don't want to uh, show you my company information, so that's just a, a demo or actually the the environment where the bot got uh, developed. And what I did, I was just saying hi, and then the bot greeted me. And this, for example, is one of the uh, lovely bugs of, of uh, the, the platform. This looks perfect on a mobile device and it looks like this uh, in, in the web or in the desktop and you cannot do anything about it from, from, from our point of view because it's just an answer that you send out. Um, it reads me back and then I just said password protection. Um, answer comes back. You see it's, it's nicely formatted. Uh, it highlights uh, some some words, but of course that's that's not, or or at least that's that's just a, a demo use case in the meaning of I only type in password protection. That's not really a question. That's not not or that's more like Google searching uh, with the bot. Um, and from our experience, there are people that that use the bot in in that that very manner. Um, most of the time, that's the IT or, or or people with more IT experience because they're like, okay, it's a bot. I'm using it like Google. Um, business users normally ask whole sentences and whole questions. And let's try that. Uh, how does password protection work in OneDrive? And you see, you get back the same thing. So. Um, showcasing in this demo is that we we are not hard coded or, or looking for 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 hard coded tokens it's really using um, a, a light version of, of language understanding and that's all powered already by the QA maker so we really just hand over the text and get the answer back from QA maker there is no Lewis, no language understanding system in, in, in the middleware in between. You can do that in Azure, of course, but that would mean that we really need to train all the phrases. Um, it's not we, what we wanted. We used a, a little bit more sophisticated. It's, it's, it's more than just a regex uh, from the QA maker, but it's not really language understanding. So it's something in between, um, but from our use cases, you see uh, password protection, how does password protection work in OneDrive as a as a sentence uh, gets back the answer and and works quite nicely. Um, ready for your next question. Um, sure. Next topic. This nice view oh. inside of a storage <laughs> unit. Uh, I've been lost because I have a real example. What's good and what's bad <laughs> and yeah. different. Storage limits very important for me as an end user. 
Yeah, you can cook. If you stretch uh, one drive for business, that's a different thing. It, it takes a plan. Let's talk. We talk about uh, E3. And in E3, you have five terabytes. And that means normally one terabyte. That means normally for all users. So you have 50,000 users, it's one terabyte. And you can have a little bit more or less with one click. If the administrator says 2,048 gigabytes, means it's double store. That means one terabyte additional for each user. That means 50,000 terabyte, and that means 50 petabytes will be. So I see always the young people storing disks in the data center. <laughs> then it's, it's a lost thing. But anyway, there's a, if you do that in the admin center, and you have the chance and you can do, I found the bug and the bug is still available. They want to close the bug and I have to say, no, it's there. And I do not want to close the bug. I have found a workaround and you can do these storage things with uh, PowerShell, but it's available also in the admin center and I have to reduce and they say, no, it's not possible. Yeah, that's a bug. Then I have to say, I reduce another storage and then go up as first down to the normal level and then the additional storage and then it works but uh, I may give the, the the people at Microsoft the chance but I do not want to close because if they close they do not want to fix it and <laughs> therefore I have to say no still let yep. it open it has nothing to say but you see now here although a picture of the memory or something that means these pictures can be highlighted a little bit more that's in the wrong that's only for why we need so much storage and a little bit more storage you see the red line one drive in your Explorer always has the latest version. And if you have a lot of versions, you see that in the middle that you these versions are stored inside uh, SharePoint and therefore we need all these this much storage that we have. Okay. Back to you. Yep, this, this was the, the, the content explanation from, from the bot perspective. You again see nicely formatted answer, uh, highlighted uh, words here. And interesting, um, we have two different or with multiple sources that, that Hans uh, also uses in, in the content. One, of course, is Microsoft. So here's a Microsoft article. I can open it up and you see uh, Hans took the time and link to the documentation. Um, and we only link to documentation or German or English articles uh, on Hans' homepage. So uh, we can get rid of the German one. That's not interesting today. Uh, let's stay in the English one because um, you can look at the docs.microsoft.com article and then Hans took the time and sometimes presents the information in a different way. So it's more uh, retractable in, in, in what he thinks or otherwise it's, uh, yeah, that he adds uh, some important sentences or adds important information. So it's easier for, for you to really get the things that you want to know and you, you see here all the different licenses and I think if I interpret that correct uh, all the different updates. All the old names and the new names when, yeah so that, that changed not, it. That did not lost when Microsoft changed names um, yeah. which quite frankly happens quite often um, and then you have the details here so that's don't want to get into details of that uh, article but just to show you um, it's not only the bot, we are also thinking of, okay, let's get uh, one step above. But I have another one. What that storage in SharePoint, what does it, what does this, uh, that's yep. this, uh, you, you know, I know, and but yep. you have to explain it. Um, down here, you see what's yes. called, uh, uh, it's called a, a follow-up prompt. So with that uh, answer, basically, Hans went in and said, okay, people that searched for that might find this article also interesting or this answer also interesting. So when I click now a storage in SharePoint Online, um, technically what happens is that Teams just uh, takes the words and uh, asks the bot uh, for exact those uh, four words. Um, so you don't need to type anything. You just need to press the button that's absolutely helpful if you are on the mobile phone. So you start asking questions, uh, you read that up and then you say, okay, what's this? Click on that button. The teams automatically ask the bots basically. Um, and from a bot perspective, we get the new question 
and then we answer back with uh, storage in SharePoint Online, uh, and then you have the famous uh, SharePoint house uh, explaining uh, how um, the storage components are are built up in terms of, of SharePoint Online and how you can calculate your your maximum storage and how it's spread out between your users and your licenses. Um, but important thing, uh, it's just a click of a button here. It's it's yeah something uh, we all know from a very famous retailer from Seattle where you just search something and then you see in the bottom people that bought red shirts also like blue shirts, for example. Um, that's basically the, the same idea. OK, um, Next another, question. another important question. If you work with OneDrive, probably everyone gets asked that if you do a project with SharePoint or OneDrive, what types of files can I store in OneDrive? What's about the allowed file types? 230. <laughs> Just two hundred friends. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is a list of all file types. Uh, Microsoft is handle now, and it's, it's it's a list. You can read that, but the list is not only. Sometimes you have to say, okay, what type of files we can store in one drive, and you see there is a list. If you click on that, you see that. But it's also available for the information directly from Microsoft. Upload and save, and that's about three hundred and twenty file types, not two hundred thirty three hundred. That, that's OK. You find all this stuff. I think most of them are very important because you have to say if you have a PDF file in, 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 in SharePoint, you know, yes, your data is also in your OneDrive. If you have it, you can search inside of um, the data, inside of the PDF and not only for the name. And therefore, it's very interesting to see what about filters and so on in SharePoint. Yep. Um, so that's that's this, and then you see again um, for that question, there are now two different uh, follow up prompts and I can start now really uh, exploring uh, knowledge and not only um, get my answers back. Um, another question uh, from a security perspective, this famous two words, what's this Fort Knox story? In, in, in OneDrive, what's oh, it's easy? Oh, in OneDrive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For Knox, all people who know the story about For Knox is gold, but uh, Microsoft do it different, and therefore the name is there. It comes from SharePoint in the early days, and have to say yes, you can save it and in For Knox, and that's another thing that you have to say what it's in there. That means it's it's a different to 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 have all these files in there and they have changed it. I have to write this article also again because if a file has there in the old days on premise, you have 64K faults, A, B, C, D. That means if you have a file with one megabyte word file, it will split each 64K in each vault. And they have different keys and the keys can be closed and, and, and also start the, the hash table in the content DB. But the thing is, they are do it now new because it has done so much time and therefore they do it up to one megabyte store and do it a little bit better because the files are bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what we have today. They do it a little bit more for speed up the things but the principle is still the same and you can say hey what's that advanced encryption store that's the original title but if you go back and see on the slide there is a video there and then you can click on that and you see the video so therefore that's a thing that you have to say yes that's a video file we don't have to show that but anything you find all the things there and that means it's encryption and means security and data encryption in office 365 it's encryption uh, question, and therefore they called it for Knox or um, security on the way. Feels like a, a interesting marketing discussion. Like, okay, we we want to store uh, data and information for end users, and it needs to be secured. Just called for Knox, and everyone thinks it's super cool. Uh, for me one of the most interesting features or currently most interesting features in OneDrive, uh, Hans file request 
what's what's the what's the fuss about that? Yeah, some administrators do not want that you have to say, okay, from different people, some information like files from them, say the agency and I have some pictures also, they do not want to have uh, to put them inside your inside the company. So you can have a request of files. That means to send a request to them and say, put the information there. That's also directly integrated uh, in all this stuff means you have it in, SharePoint, but they are not having any other possibility uh, other than upload the files. And that's a good thing. So it's it's very interesting. Although the community is using that, people having such an event like here is SPS Live, they are using it and say, okay, put the slides together and put it all the, on that way. And we have it in a different way without having it to install, hey, as a guest user and so on. Yeah, that's a that's a, a perfect scenario. If you if you work with partners, if you work with uh, colleagues that uh, or external people that, and you don't have a Teams environment already, uh, you just create a folder and request files uh, in in OneDrive. Send out the link, and they open up a page and submit their version of a PowerPoint, their version of a Word document, whatever file you requested, and basically it it ends up in your OneDrive, and that's really really a cool feature. Uh, and yeah, long time OneDrive users still have like a eye opening moments when you when you show this feature because it's under the radar a little bit. Um, and I think with, with five minutes left, we do one more Hans. Um, one, one, okay, a short one. one. More. <laughs> a short one. Uh, my, one of my, my, my test uh, phrases, uh, what's the deal with sharing in OneDrive? Oh, during my short, session, short one, right? two hours ago, yes, <laughs> it's a little bit, a little bit complicated because collaboration is a big stuff. Um, OneDrive is used, and OneDrive for Business is used, and SharePoint to have all installed these these, these things to collaborate. That's the basic of collaboration, and therefore you have to do it and share with different people. There are four rules in my business tenants, in my business slides um, showing to enterprise people that are about 100 slides. So that's a short, a very short answer because otherwise uh, the people after us behind have no chance to talk. Therefore, it's the basic of collaboration. Perfect. Um, with that, I think uh, we have like, I don't know, 20 more questions, but uh, given the time, we have three minutes left. Uh, we will end it here. Um, if you want to install the bot, uh, that's maybe an interesting yes, part. Yeah. Uh, go to your app store and search for a community bot for OneDrive. Uh, it's out there. Um, and if your administrator uh, tailored your team's environment down and you're not able to find community bot for OneDrive, go create a ticket and say, hey, uh, I saw this cool bot on Saturday. Uh, I want to try it out or go and create a developer tenant because there is, there is they're open. Um, and ask uh, your IT department to make the bot available in your environment. We are not storing any data. We are not uh, asking you for your passwords or something like that. We are just uh, trying to be of assistance and help uh, with knowledge about OneDrive. Um, and it's available, it's out there in the store. And if you have questions or uh, want to have certain questions answered in, in, in the bot, reach out on Twitter. Uh, I'm sure Hans is happy to get feedback and to add a couple more questions. Soon he will hit a thousand and hopefully we can celebrate a thousand questions already again in person <laughs> somewhere in the next month. With that, greetings from Austria to around the world and thank you for your attention. Yeah, I have all the thank you and if anyway, have a small event and although with 50 people and I have to show something, let me know. We have to look for the time zone and then we are available. Thank you so much. Thank you. Gracias.